using our eight angles with a knife and defanging the snake, keeping everything in a small target so you can attack the limbs and uh, get rid of the weapon so that it's not a danger to you. Well, for this one I just want to talk about the idea and principles of using improvised weapons. The idea of what makes a weapon. So, in essence, the way I would define it, a weapon is anything you can use to defend yourself or do harm. Uh, if someone's wielding something against you and you feel like you can do harm, it's probably a weapon. Legally, it's looked at most of the time in the same manner. If somebody picks something up and tries to use it against you, that becomes assault with a deadly weapon, right? So, the premise of improvised weapons is what can I take and use to defend myself against some form of altercation or attack? Now, you might be wondering why I'm, you know, wearing a scarf when it's Nice enough to just be wearing a t-shirt. Well, that's because this is an awesome, underutilized weapon. I can use this for lots of things. Obviously, you can choke somebody with it, right? Of course that'll work. You can also trap with it, right? I can block with it. There's lots of things I can do with this. Like we were talking about in the last video, if it's a knife fight, I can wrap this around my arm. I have protection now, I have a shield, I'm less likely to get cut. I can block with this now. So, something like this is great. Traditional Eskrima and traditional Filipino martial arts, they use a sarong, uh, which goes around the waist. This is just a shimog. You can pick these up at lots of places. Uh, survival stores, you know, like camping stores. Uh, I don't know if Cabela's has them, but along those lines. I mean, any surplus stores, great one. But anytime you have this, you can remember, I have a weapon, right? Now I don't just have to trap with it, I don't just have to choke with it. I can use it as impact, right? To distract. If somebody's got some kind of object, uh, a knife or something, you know, I can use this to deflect, use it to attack the eyes, anything. Almost any flexible weapon is going to be great to attack at the face because the eyes are so sensitive and the face bleeds so much. Anytime, if you've ever got cut on the forehead or something, you know that it, it doesn't stop bleeding very easily. So, always a good option for a flexible weapon to attack the face and the eyes, the nose, and even the ears. The ears are very sensitive too. So, don't forget, especially in wintertime, scarf, something great to have around. You know, we'll talk in the future probably about using uh, flexible weapons, especially two weapons and chokes and things like that. We're moving forward more to something that you'll probably carry all the time. In modern life, who doesn't have a, a car or a job where they have keys for the office or house keys, something. And lanyards, a lot of people carry lanyards. Something like keys are a great improvised weapon. Right? And I carry a lot of different keys and, and things on it for this particular reason. If I'm caught, well, I always have a knife. Right? Scream the door. Always got to carry a blade. But if I'm ever caught in a situation where I don't have maybe my collapsible baton or my scream of sticks or my knife or something, probably have my keys. Probably have my keys on me. So one thing to always carry that's great is a carabiner. These things are fantastic. Put on your knuckle, instant impact weapon right there. This will do a lot of damage, more than it seems like. It seems really innocent, but if you use it right, it's good. Because in a self-defense situation, a survival fighting situation, I don't really want to hit with my bare knuckles. I might break my hand. If I break the knuckles in my right hand, I can't use my knife. I can't pick up a different weapon and use it. So I don't really want to hit, especially to the head, with my bare knuckles. 
For that, we'll do palm strikes and elbows, right? Because those are more powerful and a lot more safe for me and dangerous to them. But if I do want to punch, these are great. I never particularly personally suggest putting your keys between your knuckles because they just move around so much. But a carabiner, you get one of the full-sized ones, for me at least, fits perfectly in between my fingers comfortably and I can hit with it and I don't feel a thing in this hand because it fits so well. They have weapons like that they call knuckle dusters. This is just a cheap, easy to carry version of a knuckle duster. Another thing I'll always keep on there is a big ring with some kind of lanyard attachment to it so that I can work those same eight angles that I use with knives and with sticks with this, right? This is great, flail at the eyes. Again, always flail at the face. Attack limbs, right? If they got something coming in, this is heavy. This hits something and it doesn't feel good. It misdirects, right? Misdirection is always a great thing to do, especially in a self-defense scenario. So that's the idea of improvised weapons, right? What can I take, what can I use to my advantage to keep myself safe? And it can be anything, right? If I don't have this schmog, if I don't have this scarf, I can take my shirt and do the same thing with it. If I don't have keys, maybe it's summer, I have sandals. I can use sandals to defend myself and to hit with. It's going to help out more. There's always something you can do, right? If you're out and about, maybe you have a stick laying on the ground. You can pick up a stick. Sticks, obviously, scream a great weapon to have. So the idea is look at what's in your environment, look at what's around you, and just think about how can I use it to my benefit, to my advantage, if the time comes that I need to. Pretty simple. Just take some thinking. If you ever want any examples, watch some Jackie Chan movies. Great improvised weapon use right there, right? Sorry, so that's all for this one, guys. Just wanted to give you a little couple tips, tricks. Hopefully help you out. Hopefully you never have to use it. Until the next one, I'm Dustin with Sidekicks of Screamer. I'll see you later.